Hey friends, welcome back. We're going to move on today to lesson eight, which is a little similar to what we did yesterday, practicing solving problems using one of those methods that we like. Remember the um, new groups above or the new groups below. We're going to practice those proof drawings as well. All right, and then we're going to work a little bit on the back. You know, our friend Puzzled Penguin, he's making an appearance today and you know, he's always confused. So it's our job to help him out. So let's start on page 205. If you don't have what you need, you need to pause the video and get yourself prepared. Page 205, and we're just gonna do uh, a couple of problems on this side. And then we're gonna take a peek at our friend, poor Puzzled Penguin, all right? Let's look and start with question number one. So remember, we're solving and we're gonna do a proof drawing. So hopefully if you didn't understand yesterday or was a little, a little um, confusing, you decided to come to our live math lesson on today. Let's read the problem. There are 359 cars and 245 trucks in the parking garage. How many vehicles are in the garage? So vehicles, that's one of those words that could combine cars and trucks and motorcycles and everything that we could use uh, for transportation. So 359, 245, how many are in the garage? So we're going to add those numbers together. Let's write this problem down together. 359 plus 245. All right, we're going to solve that. I want you to pause the video and solve it on your own. All right, when I add together nine ones and five ones, that gives me 14 ones, but I know I can only put one digit down here. I have to make a new group above and I'm going to circle it. It's a little hard to see. Now I'm going to add my tens. Five plus five more is 10. I have three, four, five, six. So hopefully you came up with 604. I'm gonna write vehicles underneath, just so I have a little space. Okay, so 604 vehicles. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and draw, write it up here. And I'm gonna use this white space down here to make my drawings. So they won't be right next to my numbers. 359, when I make a proof drawing of that, here's 300, five tens, and nine ones. Okay, so you do the same thing, 359, and I'm gonna add to that 245. So hopefully you can see right away what to do. When we added our ones together, nine and five, look at all of those, right? We don't need all of those loose little pieces. If we can combine and make a 10, a group of 10, then we can have a 10 stick, right? So it's a lot easier to carry those 10 sticks around than it is all those little pieces. I know I have nine right here. I'm going to take one from my other group. Okay, remember yesterday, I think I used a highlighter to show you what's left. It's really important that we're nice and neat so that we can see what we're doing. So if I combine all of those, I've made a new 10, right? And I'm gonna cross these off because I'm getting rid of them. And I'm gonna put my new 10 above because there's my new group. Now I'm gonna check my 10s. I had five here, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That's like having 10, 10 sticks, which I know is the same as having a group of a hundred, right? I'd much rather carry around one flat than 10, 10 sticks. So I'm going to trade these in. I'm going to circle all of them. That's showing how I'm grouping them together, right? I'm getting rid of them and I'm adding a new hundred above. Okay, so what do I have left? Nothing here. So there's nothing to show. And then I have 
this box, this box, all of these here. That's what I have left over. So let's look and see what I have. One, two, three, four, five, six hundreds. I don't have any tens and I have four ones left over. 604 okay, proves that I got the right answer and I didn't forget to put down my label. Okay, I'm going to erase it right here because I rewrote it. Okay, so we're not going to do number two because we've crept over into that space, right? So let's put an X on that so that we don't think that this is part of that answer. Okay, let's look down at number three and do the same thing. On Saturday, 590 people went to the art museum. On Sunday, 355 people went to the museum. How many people went to the museum all together? So how many people, right? There's that keyword all together. We're grouping things. Can't wait for the day when we can go back to the museums. Saturday was 590. You know what? I'm going to write it down a little bit further so I can see my new groups above or below if I have them. 590. And I'm going to add the 355 that went the next day. Okay, so pause the video and I want you to solve that math, either using new groups above or new groups below. You know, I like those new groups above. So I'm going to add zero and five just gives me five. Did I make a new group? Any new tens? No, I only have five ones. Nine tens and five tens makes 14 tens, which is the same thing as 140. So I've made a new hundred because I have 140. And I'm going to add together my hundreds, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundreds. So my answer should be 945 people. But we're going to draw a proof drawing to make sure that we're right, to prove that we know why we have a new group of 100. All right. So let's draw our 590. One, two, three, four, five hundred. There's 590. You can tell here's 50 plus the extras. That's why I make that nice space in between. Do I have any ones to draw? I don't. But now I'm going to draw 355. One, two, 350, and five. Okay, now I'm going to start to group things together. I didn't have any ones up here right? I just have five. So I'm going to highlight those. That's why I have five ones. Look at all these tens. Right away, I can see five and five more. I know I can combine those, right? I'm going to trade them in for a new hundred because if I count by tens 10 times, that makes a new hundred. So I don't have anything here, right? No tens at all. Now let's count one, two, three. Oh, wait a minute. Let me back up. Look what's over here. I got ahead of myself, didn't I? Because I was looking just in this column. So maybe I should have drawn it a little bit better. I've got four tens which is why I have a four there. Okay. Now I'm going to count my hundreds. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundreds. And there's my proof. I have nine, four tens, and five ones. Okay, maybe I should have drawn my ones over here so I would have kind of seen those separated. So maybe that's a good tip for you. This drawing proves why my answer is 945. Okay, and you can see I didn't make any new tens. I only made a new hundred, which is this guy right up here that I put up, up above. Okay, 
Let's visit our friend, Puzzled Penguin. Okay. In the back on page 206, he's always confused most of the time, right? And we like to help him out because we're good mathematicians. And he says, dear math students, today I found the answer to 168 plus 78, but I don't know if I added correctly. Please look at my work. Is my answer right? If not, please correct my work and tell what I did wrong. Your friend, Puzzled Penguin, right? He's got his hands up. He's kind of questioning what he's done. Remember, when we respond to him and we write an answer, we always want to be kind, right? We don't ever want to make somebody feel um, like they don't know what they're doing just because they're confused, okay? So we always want to use kind words to explain to our friend, Puzzled Penguin, maybe what he did wrong, right? Most... I think most of the time, everybody's kind because they know what it's like to make mistakes. Look at his problem right here. 168 plus 78, and he got 948. We've used that word reasonable and unreasonable before. Do you think if he added those two numbers, he'd get 948? What do you think about that? Look at what he might have done. What do you think he did wrong? I know the other day we talked so much about how it's so important to line up our place values, right? The number 78 is seven tens and eight ones. Does he have that in the ones and the tens column? He doesn't, right? He did not line up his place value to get started, right? So he put them in the wrong order. So let's write to him. You put your digits, those are just numbers, in the wrong place value, we'll say columns. Okay, so there's our answer, our reason for what he did, but we want right to correct his work. We've already told him what he did wrong, but we want to do it the right way. And I can see he likes to use new groups below because I can see his one right here. So he's added a new group. Okay, Remember, if I go too fast and you're not done writing and I've moved on, you can pause the video, finish the writing, and come back when you're ready. So if he didn't line them up correctly, we need to do that for him. 160. Ooh, you know what? I keep doing that. I need to leave room above for myself. 168 plus 78, right? Seven tens, eight ones. So we can tell already our problems look a lot different. I'm going to add my eights. And if you know your doubles, right away you know that's 16. Here's my new group above. Ooh, look at that seven. This makes a seven. I know my doubles. Seven and seven is 14. Okay, and now I have two hundreds. So he said the answer was 948. It's really 246. He's way off, right? So making a mistake by putting things not in the same column, right, can really throw off your answer. Now, if we were in the classroom, I like to pull out something called graph paper. If you have a hard time lining things up, or you have kind of messy handwriting, or you just want to be sure that you know that you're doing it the right way, see if the parents might have some graph paper laying around, or older brothers and sisters, okay? You can even Google it and print it if you have a printer. Here's what graph paper looks like. It's just a bunch of squares together, okay? But what it allows you to do is keep your numbers lined up and in order. So the one that we just did, remember, it was 168 plus 78. So it helps you to keep things lined up inside these little boxes. So if that's something that might help you, okay, see if you can find a way to print it or see if you can um, borrow some from an older sibling. Another thing you can do is on just your regular school lined paper, when you write your problem, right, you can really draw lines 
in between your places. You want to draw them a little bit lighter so you don't think that maybe this is like a number one in here. Okay, but it can show you with your eyes separating your ones, your tens, and your hundreds. So that's another way to do it, to just make some light marks in between to make sure that you've stacked your numbers correctly. When we look at the bottom of our page, we're going to have to do that tells us right here, line up the places to add. Okay, let's write in here, graph paper. Okay, because that's one of the, the tricks that you can use if you have a hard time. It's just to write each addition vertically, and vertically means up and down, right? Line up the places correctly, then add and make a proof drawing. So let's write that word vertically over here. And that is this direction, up and down. Okay, think of like a column on a building. It holds up the roof and it's doing that vertically. The other word is horizontally, which goes side to side. And we're not doing that here. Okay, so let's pick the one in the middle. We're gonna do 650 plus 345. And you'll see that it's written horizontally, but that's not how I want you to solve it, okay? An easy way to not make a mistake is instead of rewriting the whole problem, I'm just gonna take this number and I'm gonna move it underneath. So if I have five ones, four tens, and three hundreds, I'm gonna do it like that. So I don't take a chance on rewriting this number 650 the wrong way okay if you want to rewrite it that's totally fine it's just saving it one step and it's making sure i don't write anything the wrong way zero plus five is five five plus four is nine six plus three is nine so my answer should be 995 and we're going to prove it by making a proof drawing or a place value drawing. 650. One, two, three, four, five, 600. And there's 50. I don't have any ones. Okay, now I'm gonna add 300. Four tens and five ones. And this is what I should have done on the last page, right? Kept them separate. How many ones do I have? Five. Did I make a new group of anything? Nope. Here's my five. I have five tens and four tens. Five tens and four tens make nine tens, which is the same as 90, right? Because I'm counting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Did I make a new group? Did I make circle and add anything over here? I did not. So if I don't need to make a new group, I'm not going to do that. Let's count my hundreds. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. I have nine hundreds. So my proof is 995. I'm going to write that number right below. Okay. In this example, I didn't make any new groups at all. So if I were to ask you, did you make a new 10? You'd say no, right? I didn't have to, to group anything together to make a new 10. Did I make a new 100? No, I did not have to group anything together to do that. All right. So today, when you are working on your homework, you're going to do some practicing. Okay. And I want you to make sure that you're accurate. So double check yourself and remember to read my directions on Google Classroom along with the directions on the page. But sometimes I make a different choice or maybe I'll tell you to do all the evens or maybe I'll tell you only to draw place value drawings on number one and number two. Right. So you want to make sure that you read my directions as well. All right. Good luck today.